Sources and Series. Are you ready, Arjun? You ready for this? Did you want to grab some paper? Okay. So uh, we'll start with L'Hopital's rule and sequences. Just a quick comment about sequences. Tomorrow we'll do series. But sequences are lists of terms, and a lot of times we care what that last term is if we went to infinity. So if we go to infinity, what would that term be? Well, if we went to infinity, that last term, if it's zero, then we can add an infinite number of zeros and get a convergent series, right? But if it's anything other than zero, let's say it's one half, and you added an infinite number of halves, that's not going to converge. So we'll see that that's a way to look at sequence or series. But today we're just going to look at sequences. And do you remember when we did L'Hopital's rule that we had a number of indeterminate forms? These are the ones that we looked at. Zero over zero, infinity over infinity are the most common. Infinity minus infinity, one, one to the infinity, zero times infinity, zero to the zero, infinity to the zero. These are less common, but what you can do is with some algebra, you can convert all of these into zero over zero or infinity over infinity, as, as we'll see in a little bit. But those are available on here, if you would like, and I'll leave those uncovered. All right, so let's do uh, L'Hopital's rule real quick. Plug in infinity, and you're going to get infinity over infinity, which you would write. It's an indeterminate form. That allows you, if it's written in f of x over g of x form, you can take limit as n approaches infinity, the derivative of the top over the derivative of the bottom, 3n squared. Now, if you put infinity in this time, it's going to be infinity over infinity again. So that's an indeterminate form. So you're going to have to take that derivative again. So the limit as n approaches infinity of 8 over 6n. And as n goes to infinity, this will go to what? Zero, right? And we would not do it that way. L'Hopital's, that's not a very smart, efficient way to do it. How would you do that one? Yeah, just kind of, you know, you could just look at this, the greater power of n in the bottom. Uh, we also talked about if you went 0 times n to the third in the top, and the coefficient is 0 over 1, greatest exponent of n is n cubed, 0 over 1 is just 0, so that's another way to do it. Okay, uh, Let's try L'Hopital's on this one. Sine 3x over 5x. Well, if you put in a 0, you're going to get 0 over 0, which is an indeterminate form. So we can say this is the limit as uh, n approaches 0 of the derivative of sine 3x. What's the derivative of sine 3x, Gene? Sine 3x? Well, sine 3x. Perfect. Times what? 3x. Perfect. And then that's over 5. So put a 0 in. What's the cosine of 0 equal to? If this is 0, what's the cosine of 0? 1. So this will just be 3 fifths. And there you go. 3 fifths. Uh, if you don't want to do that one, L'Hopital's, what you could do is pull this one-fifth out in front, and you can say, well, I remember somewhere where the sine of u over u as u went to zero is equal to one. So if I had a three down here and pull out a one, a three, you're going to get sine of u over u, which is one, one times three-fifths is three-fifths. That's another way to do that one. Okay, the one that you're going to have, if you're going to have trouble with any of these L'Hopital's, this is the one you're going to struggle with. It's the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 minus 2 over infinity to the infinity. That one is a little crazy. What's 2 over infinity going to go to? Zero. So we're talking 1 to the infinity. Well, that's an indeterminate form. So our technique is to go y equal to 
1 minus 2 over n to the n. Does anybody remember the first move to make? Nice. Natural log of both sides. Good. So you have the natural log of y. Pull this n out in front. So you get n times the natural log of 1 minus 2 over n. And then we're going to ignore this for a little while. Just forget about it. And we're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of the natural log of 1 minus 2 over n over, now this is n, it's also 1 over 1 over n. And just for kicks, put a, an infinity in for n. This is going to be 1 minus 0. What's the natural log of 1? 0. And what's 1 over infinity? There's where, like I said, you can always turn things into a 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. So that's an indeterminate form. We're going to use that to take the derivative of top and bottom. The bottom is n to the negative 1, which is negative 1 over n squared, or negative n to the negative 2. This one is 1 over 1 minus 2 over n. And the derivative of 2, negative 2 n to the negative 1, is going to be 2 over n to the negative 2 n squared. So this is a fraction division. Notice that these will cancel and this goes to 0. So you'll be left with 2 over 1, which is 2, over negative 1, which is negative 2. So is my limit negative 2? No. Remember our natural log up here? So the natural log of y is equal to negative 2. So we need to find out what that is. Log base e of y is equal to negative 2. I think it's just going to be e to the negative 2 equal to my limit. Now, you knew this because when you look back here, doesn't this thing look a lot like 1 plus 1 over n to the n? Doesn't this look a lot like it? Doesn't it look, and that was what? Of e. That's the definition of e. 1 plus 1 over infinity to the infinity. This is e. And you can prove it with this technique. So where did the e to the negative 2 come from? Right there. Negative 2. All right, we'll keep moving. Improper integrals. So we use these techniques to help evaluate um, integrals. And so this one, just wanted to mention that uh, 2 to infinity is crazy. 2 to infinity, are you kidding me? Goes to infinity. But if you look at this one, it's n to the negative 2 going from 2 to infinity. And so you're just going to get hmm, n a derivative is n to the negative 1 over negative 1 going from 2 to infinity. So this will be the limit as n goes to infinity of negative 1 over n minus a negative 1 over 2. And what will this go to here? 0. Ooh, I like that. And then this is just going to be 1 half. So the area from 2 to infinity of 1 over n squared is a half. <laughs> Crazy. I love calculus. Surprising. Uh, this one here might surprise you a little bit. 1 over 1 plus n squared. 1 over 1 plus n squared is the antiderivative of what? Arctangent of n going from negative infinity to infinity. Now, you might be bothered by this one a little bit because you're going, I don't think I can do the arctangent 
of infinity minus the arc tangent of negative infinity. And if you think about it, here's your infinity minus infinity, right? So what, what's going to happen with this is we're going to look at our graph of arc tangent. And do you remember what the asymptotes were for this one? This was pi over something, and this was negative pi over something. Yeah, over 2. So as this thing goes to infinity, it's going to approach pi over 2. As this one approaches negative infinity, it's going to approach negative pi over 2. So the area from negative infinity to infinity of 1 over 1 plus n squared, I'm not making this up, it's pi over 2 minus a negative pi over 2, which is pi. And any problem that has an answer of pi is a good one in my book. So we're going to uh, evaluate this one. Now, what technique are you going to use for this? It's worth talking about. Very good. Integration by parts. You're going to have your u, dv, du, and v. And you're going to pick probably x for u and e to the x for dv. Because the integral of e to the x is e to the x. Derivative of x is just 1 dx. I like that. So x marks the spot. You get x e to the x minus the integral of 1 e to the x dx. And that's just e to the x going from negative infinity to 0. This one's very cool, too. So if you um, put in a 0, you're going to 0 e to the 0 minus e to the 0 minus the limit as x goes to negative infinity of x e to the x minus e to the x. Now I need to help you a little bit. Here's what the graph of e to the x looks like goes through point zero one, and as we go to negative infinity, what y value does it approach? What do you think? Zero. What? Okay, e to the negative infinity. So do you see how all that goes to zero? Okay, and then, yeah. And then this is just going to be 0 minus 1. My answer is negative 1. It's an area below. It's OK. We, we're used to, in this unit, everything was positive, but that'll work. And then um, this one here, I just want to remind you of the p test that we talk about a lot. What's the integral of 1 over x dx? What's that integral? ln of x, right? So that is going to go to infinity. If you go ln of x going from like 1 to infinity, in natural log of infinity is infinity. That diverges. So if p was equal to 1, not going to work if p equals 1. But if p, if p is greater than 1, like 2 or 3 or 4, it's going to converge. So for this one, p greater than 1, you're going to have a convergent. And you could integrate that to, to prove it. The other thing I wanted to mention is if you had x to the p dx, what would p have to be for this one to be convergent? Very good. Less than negative 1 to be convergent. That's the p test. Very quick thing that we'll be able to use. Uh, this one I'm not going to do, but you can do on your own. This is the one that has the uh, double integral of, by parts, and then you're going to get 
you're going to add that integral to the other side. Remember doing that one, this two-step one? And uh, this is an interesting pi over 2 to infinity, very interesting integral you can try. This might be one you want to try at home. Then I'm going to go McLaren and Taylor on you. And McLaren is about 0, Taylor is about anything else. If you do e to the 2x, what you probably would do is you'd probably go um, just the e to the x is in your packet. It's 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial, x cubed over 3 factorial. And then in place of x, you're just going to put in 2x. So you get 2x plus 2x squared over 2 plus 2x cubed over 3. That's your e to the x with 2x plugged in. We also did the derivative method. You want to talk about that quick? If f of x equals e to the 2x, what's the derivative of that? e to the 2x times what? Good. What's the second derivative of that? e to the 2x times 4. So if you go f of 0, you're going to get e to the 0, which is 1. f prime of 0 be 2, e to the 0 equals 2. And the second derivative will be equal to 4. So you'll have e to the 2x is going to be coefficient 1 plus 2x over 1 factorial plus 4x squared over 2 factorial. And you can probably guess the next one's going to be 8x cubed over 3 factorial. And that is exactly what we said this is, 1 plus 2x plus 4x squared over 2 factorial. It works perfect. So using that and the idea that sine x, can you look in your packet, what's sine x equal to? I can't remember it. It's x, yes, minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial. Does that sound right? So then what do we put in for x then? 2x. Very powerful way to use McLaren series. Use those base functions if you can. Would you look, in, would you freak out if you saw this one change into McLaren? Would that freak you out? What's this one equal to in your packet? Can you find it? Give me the first three terms. X minus X plus X cubed over 3. Yeah, And you could do this derivative and you could check that all out. What does it mean if we're multiplying by X squared? Look how easy that is. Isn't that awesome? Practice one? Okay. Excellent. And, and it's, it's pretty easy, but I just wanted to mention that. So uh, last one we're going to do is a Taylor series. Now the Taylor series, instead of putting f of 0, we're going to put f of whatever that value is. So just for kicks here, I'm going to go f of x is x to the 1 half. What's the first derivative of that? Go ahead and just shout it out. First derivative. Perfect. And the second derivative is going to be? Good. And then for kicks, let's do one more. I don't need it, but we'll just do it. 3 eighths. You got it. OK. So then you're going to go f of 1 because we're going about x equal to 1. In the problem, we're approximating the square root of x about x equal to 1. So you're going to get for that 1, for this one, what's this one going to be? 
put in a 1 in for x. 1 half, the second derivative, negative 1 fourth, and the third derivative, 3 eighths. Okay. Now, we to do this, you take 1 plus 1 half x. Now, before we just put x, but it's x minus 1 here over 1 factorial plus, actually minus 1 fourth x minus 1 squared over 2 factorial. And we could do another term, but this is good enough for now. You okay with the Taylor? Pretty comfortable. Now for Lagrange, we're going to find the error for x equal to 1.12. So x is equal to 1.12. What is x minus 1 equal to? 0.12. Okay. This also has the name of C that we're going to look at, a possible value for C. Okay. Uh, actually, it shouldn't be C. It should be H. They call it H. All right. So for the error, we're going to say the error is less than the next term. Now, if you want to make a big, terrible error, you can do what I did last hour and just say, oh, the next term, it's going to be the derivative is 3 eighths when you put a 1 in. But that's not going to work. What you're going to do is you're going to put something times x minus 1 to the third over 3 factorial. And then if you would please put in this into the box. Put the whole thing, 3 eighths x to the negative 5 halves because you need to find find the C value. C is between 0 and 0 0.12. And we want to see which gives me the biggest error. Well, we can't put a 0 in because it'll be undefined. So that won't work. So we're going to put a 0.12 in. And so that's going to be, and I think that'll work work out all right. So it's going to be error less than 3 eighths 0.12 to the negative 5 halves times 1.12 minus 1 is 0.12 to the third all over 6. And if you're into simplifying things, and I know you are, it's going to be 1.12 to the 5, negative 5 halves uh, times 0.12 to the 6 halves will just be uh, 3 over 48, 8 times 6, 0.12 to the 1 half. And that's going to be your maximum error that you have. Yes? Wait, we're putting in C for X, right? So why isn't it going to be minus 1 point. Thanks to Sam for catching that error. It's not a big one, but it's it's a conceptual one that would be confusing. This isn't X anymore. It's C. It's C. And C is between 0 and 0 0.12. That's the Lagrange formula. So you take that next derivative and you have a C in for X. This is still X. 1.12 minus 1. But this is now a different value. It's somewhere, it's either 0 or 0 0.12. Thank you so much for catching that. And then on the last slide, I think I had some more, you know, the purpose of this is to integrate. So you could do the arctangent, uh, find the McLaren series for that, and go from 0 to 1. You can do uh, sine x over x, e to the negative x squared over 2. You know, what you would do is you would go from negative 1 to 1. Sine x was x minus x cubed over uh, 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial. And then if it's divided by x, we can just divide these all by x, right? And then integrate it. 
plug in those values and figure it out. Same with this one. Do e to the x, plug that in, and then you can integrate and do that. Is everybody okay with that? That's the whole point of all of this. And that finishes things off for today.